Hey everyone, Matt here. In this video, I want to give a rundown of the project browser. So this is how you navigate inside the model. All of the work is inside this one model. All of our sheets, all of our views, all the electric work, the mechanical work, the plumbing work, it's all in this one file. So you navigate to get to all of your different views to see all of your different work with the project browser over here. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into the disciplinary stuff as we're going to do uh, more in-depth videos on those, but I do want to go give a general rundown of some of the more generic things that everyone will be using no matter what discipline you're in. So uh, starting at the top up here, we've got views. Now views are the basically the AutoCAD equivalent of model space. So your view is where you do all of the work and where you put all of your notes and your key notes and all of that. The sheet down here, your sheets are what your title block is on and you put the view, you drag the view onto the sheet and then print the sheet. So the sheet has your general notes and your key notes. The actual text file for the key notes is on the sheet and then the the little family with the circle and the number would be on the view, right? So that's basically the difference between views and sheets in Revit. So in our views, we have coordination views, which are the views that everyone uses basically. And then we've got electrical, mechanical, and plumbing, which are pared down for each discipline. So there's not a whole lot of extra fluff in these ones here. In the coordination view, this is where we come to manipulate the scope boxes. So whoever set up the model should already have set up these scope boxes. In the beginning, most of you are going to be working in already set up projects. We've kind of talked about this. We're going to set them up until everyone gets a little more experience. Uh, end game is everyone should be setting up be, or be able to set up their own jobs just like we do in CAD. You're given a project, either member of that team should be able to set it up mechanically or electrically and there shouldn't be a delay because you're waiting on someone to set it up for you. Um, but even so, even getting into an already set up project, the scope box may not be exactly what you want it to be. The scope box is the, the scope box is what dictates what your view cut is going to be. So this is the entire model, right? So that's the site. We've got all this extra site work out here that we don't want to see. We don't need to see our scope of work is this little chunk of this building right here. Right, so we take this one scope box, we drag it over here, we name it phase two. Okay, so now we've got a scope box, and then in all of our subsequent electrical, mechanical, and plumbing views, we would reference those views to phase two, and then that would cut all of this extra stuff out and just show you what's inside that box. Okay, so if that box needs to get bigger or smaller, depending on what your view needs to show then you would come to this project setup view here in the coordination section and you would change the scope box this way. So you click on it and just drag these little arrows up or down and it will change the view. Uh, also in this project setup are these three sections which are just section cuts through this view. These are used more in the setting up of your project so once you get more comfortable with that you're going to start playing with these sections more but for most of the time you're just going to come in here change your scope box a little bit to show a little more or a little less of the of the building or the site or whatever and then just x right back out of this view that's all you need to get into this view for so you just x right back out of it uh, coming up next would be our ceiling plans uh, these ceiling coordination views are mostly here for mechanical. 
This is where mechanical needs to come to place their diffusers. This is where your ceiling is going to be shown as electrical places their lights. These are architectural lights, so they're probably not even in the right place anyway. Uh, electrical does tend to place as close as they can to electrical or architectural locations, but this one looks a little wonky here, so they're probably going to go down this row instead of that row. But even still, as electrical places their lights, they will populate in this view. So when mechanical comes in here, mechanical can come in, place their diffusers, line it up in the grid, and now you know that your diffusers are lined up in the grid, missing all the lights. The only thing you should be seeing on this view are diffusers and lights. So you should have no problem when the architect sends us a new model update and you come in here and you want to go verify that they didn't change their ceilings around and you know which happens to us all on all of our jobs pretty much so even in CAD uh, the difference is in CAD you have your entire sheet with all of the work basically so you've got all your notes all your duct work all your equipment all everything is on there so it can sometimes get a little convoluted to be able to see your diffusers and you can miss them if you come into this view all you see are lights and diffusers in the ceiling <laughs> so you come in here you zoom into the room are your diffusers still in the grid yes awesome moving on it's like super easy to do your uh, update coordination for uh, your mechanical diffusers and stuff like that. Uh, also, we do not use, currently, we don't use a ceiling plan in our mechanical sheets because in Revit, when you have a ceiling plan, the view is from standing on the floor looking up. So when you draw all your ductwork and you do a hidden line and all of your lines break for you know depth effect which is what we do all of your brakes are backwards it'll be the wrong way for what you want it's not so we show them on the floor plan we draw all of our duct work on the floor plans so that the brakes are correct and we put the diffusers in here which will also show up on your floor plan you will have diffusers it's just you won't have a ceiling grid on the mechanical plans. You gotta come in here to get your ceiling grid to place your diffusers. And then, so after this, we've got the electrical, mechanical, and plumbing views. Those are fairly self-explanatory, so I won't get into those too much. Uh, for this view, we or for this video, we will have a more in-depth video on those, so uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, after that comes legends in here the only thing that I really use in here is this keyed notes file this is the text file that goes on your sheet with your title block so as you add the circle family with the keyed notes to your views that those keyed notes will then populate this text file on your sheet so this is where that file is located. Sometimes if you add a new sheet, you need to drag this in. I don't, I, I think there's some electrical sheets that don't have this in. I think electrical has to drag this in all the time because Shane always asked me where this was. So this is a good thing to know where the key notes are is in your legends. After that comes schedules. This is where all of the sheet schedules for equipment, such as units, uh, water heaters, lights, plugs, any kind of electrical schedules that you guys use. I don't believe your panel schedules are located in here. Uh, Manny will be doing more uh, in-depth video on the schedules and how to uh, bring those into your sheets. I'm not sure exactly how you guys do it. On the mechanical side, we've got our M schedules here, which are still being changed around some. Uh, these NA schedules are out of the box schedules that we've labeled that we don't use very much. Um, 
we've got our plumbing schedules down here labeled as P. So we've got our fixture schedule, our you know our water heater schedule, pump schedule, and then down here we've got the more updated mechanical schedules. I probably should label these with an M. Uh, so here would this would be your packaged heat pump. So if you drag this in, that just goes on your title block sheet. And then as you bring in equipment, it will automatically uh, fill this schedule out for you. So that is where the schedules are located. And there are a lot of them. This is where the sheets are. These are the sheets that you're going to print. I don't want to call them views because that will get confusing. These are views. <laughs> These are sheets. You print your sheets. So I don't want to call them a view. Uh, so we've got our electrical sheets here, which are already pre-made. As you don't need sheets, you would just delete them out of the, just right click on it and delete. Or you can just click on it and hit the delete button. That will also work. We've got plumbing sheets down here, same concept. Any floors that you don't need, you would just erase. Any schematics you don't need, you would just erase. Same with mechanical. If you need to add sheets, we are going to uh, have subsequent videos on how to add sheets. Uh, but you right click up here, new sheet. Um, so you would. There's where all your sheets go. And then now we have families. This is very important. Families is where all of your, uh, basically this is Revit's block library, okay? All of your diffusers are here. All of the annotation symbols are here. So the keynote symbol, the point of connection symbol, uh, the titles, the just about everything in Revit is a family. It's like hardly anything is just lines. Um, in here we've got our logos, we've got tags, we've got two D elements, we've got oh, this is just annotation still. So see, we've got air terminals, we've got pipe duct fittings so here would be all your rectangular elbows your oval elbows your round elbows takeoffs taps all of those things would be in here you could come in here if you needed to find a rectangular duct elbow miter with turning points so see if there's that would be where you would go to edit this. You would click this, right click here, and then edit. Where is it? Oh, do it here. This one. Edit. So then this would open this up over here as its own family, and then you could make changes and reload it back into the model as you need to. So you've got mechanical equipment all kinds of stuff. Everything that is that is a block almost is in here. There are a few exceptions which are groups. There are a few groups. A grouping is a it's you can do it in CAD too. Uh, I never did. It's so it's in Revit you can take a bunch of of line work and text and stuff. Actually, I can show you one right here on the sheets. We have one on the sheets. So if we go to, let's say, the lighting plan right here, this is a group. So this is a group made up of one, two lines, a circle, and a piece of text, and then this key note text. Okay, so then when you click on it, now that's been grouped together to make a, a, a group. Those groups are located here. This is where they get named. This is where they stay. So um, we've got general notes and general notes two, I believe. Uh, general notes is this one, and general notes two is this one, I believe. 
So if you want to make groups, we can do that. We'll have videos on how to make groups, videos on how to edit families and stuff. Uh, and we've got at the very bottom, we've got our Revit links. This is where you're going to always verify that your architectural model is linked in. If this little blue arrow is ever a red X, then you've got no model in here. And when you go to your view, your view is going to be just a bunch of floating ductwork or floating panels, or uh, actually it won't be floating panels. You're gonna get a big giant error that says that uh, your panels aren't hosted to the wall is what's gonna happen. Um, you're gonna get errors that you, your spaces are floating. Um, that happens down here. You come down here and check your Revit links. Um, sometimes we get a structural model and we can link in our own structural model. So you would just right click here and reload from, and then you would browse to where that model is located. And then the structural would have a little blue arrow with the name of the structural model. Instead of just saying structural, it would be like uh, LTA phase two, whatever the structural company is doing there. So, that is basically a quick rundown of the project browser. There will be more videos to follow with more in-depth uh, sections per discipline on, on how to add views, remove views, add sheets, remove sheets, uh, manipulate families, add families. So, but I just wanted to give everybody a quick rundown on, on how to uh, navigate around. So click there and go to the program. Ta -da. All right. Thanks, everybody. Later.